morning, everybody. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church of Cloquet, Minnesota. My name is Pastor Luke Lee Kander. I'm so happy to see all of you today. And I'm so happy to see all the little children, as we'll hear in our gospel today. Let the little children come. So welcome, welcome, little children. So good to see you. Many announcements today. Many, many, many. So this is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. We will be worshiping in our praise style of worship. Next week will be traditional. We also have baptisms today, which is always a great time, so we're very happy about that. Uh, there is some produce on the table in the narthex that's free to grab. There's some sauce tomatoes, some zucchini, and some pickling cucumbers. Plus, I hear the Obers have a whole trailer of gourds outside. So if you want a gourd, go check that out. Uh, the video that was made for our 125th will be playing in the fireside room following worship, plus it is on our website, so you can check it out at home as well. Uh, today is Food Shelf Sunday. The white basket is in the back of the sanctuary. Contribution totals for the third quarter of Food Shelf Sunday and, and Cloquet Salvation Army, $1,075, and Second Harvest Food Bank, $1,075. So good job collecting for the food shelf. Community of Hope is serving ham and crock pot potatoes, salad, fruit, and dessert at St. Paul's today at 4 p.m. See, I got it. Yeah. No matter what it says up there, it's at St. Paul's. Uh, the Chili Cook-Off is being held Sunday, October 13th at 4.30 p.m. We really want some more cooks and all participants that are coming to sign up in the Narthex. Uh, we need to have those sign up so we know how to plan. Uh, there are some really great prizes, silent auction items, four passes of golf and carts at Cloquet Country Club, $100 Walmart gift card, American gift card, Wilderness Hockey Season Passes, there's some pretty awesome prizes or uh, silent auction items. So sign up, show up. We're going to have a great time. And it's a bye week for all you Vikings fans, so don't worry about that. Lutefist Dinner is coming up on Saturday, October 26th. If you want to get your tickets ahead of time, they can be purchased in our office during business hours. Pastor Christine from Zion will be leading our worship here on October 20th while I go over there to lead their worship in a pulpit swap. Really looking forward to that and looking forward to you all getting to know the new pastor from Zion. Uh, wisdom in the Room begins today during Sunday school. There will be an adult forum where we will sit and talk more about the text, pray, just kind of support each other. It's a Wisdom in the Room, so we kind of guide it ourselves. So feel free to come on down to the Fellowship Hall and join us for Wisdom in the Room after worship today. The Tom Cockett Trio is performing at Encore Arts, Performing Arts Center in Cloquet, October 12th. It's a 2 o'clock matinee, and tickets are on sale now. 218-878-0071, uh, or look it up at Encore Performing Arts Center. And last, but certainly not least, I hope everybody's ready to sing a little bit. Today's radio broadcast is sponsored by Roger and Julie Lightenden, Light Lutenen. In celebration of Rose Marie Limitinen's 100th birthday. She's our oldest living member. So let's wish her a happy birthday. The camera's right back there. I ask if you are able to stand and turn around and let's sing happy birthday to Rose Marie. She will watch the video later today, I, I presume. All right. We're going to get an accompaniment for this, Brad, or just a cappella? Go for it. All right. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Rosemary, happy birthday to you. Happy 100th birthday, Rosemary. We love you very much. Are there any other announcements before we begin worship? Did I actually remember all the extras? Wow. I feel pretty accomplished today. All right. Let's open in song. Standing is optional. <laughs>
Hang on to those shakers. We're going to use them again. You may be seated. Our service opens with confession and forgiveness. Everything you need for worship is found in your bulletins as well as up on the screens. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
Please join me as we pray our prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for a life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis, chapter 2, verses 18 through 24. The Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Psalm 8. Please read responsively. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than the divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 4, and chapter 2, 5 through 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now, God did not subject the world, the coming world, about which we are speaking, to angels. But someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made for them a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. 
For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, you, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little, little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today we are given scripture selections that seem to set very strict rules. Rules about gender, rules about marriage, it would be easier to focus on the psalm or Hebrews today, but if you are LGBTQIA2S+, or if you've been affected by divorce, these texts need to be addressed. Left unexplored, scriptures like these can kick you in the gut or hit you over the head like a bludgeon, and we will not do that. So grace, peace, and mercy to you from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Even when we do not see it, we know that God's love for everyone, and I mean everyone, is found in Scripture. You see, we interpret Scripture through the lens of Christ. That is, we humbly look for God's grace and mercy, trusting that it is there, even if we're not seeing it. For years, these texts have haunted me, but I have learned to find grace within them. My hope for you today is that you too will find peace here. I am a child of divorce, and I have many family and close friends who are LGBTQ. As a child of divorce, and someone whose own marriage nearly came to divorce, I can say that I spent much of my life feeling judged, which in my estimation is the opposite of feeling beloved. Children often feel like they can be to blame when their parents fight or are divorced. And that is how I felt. I know many of you have been affected by divorce in your lives too. I physically felt all those old feelings of guilt and shame built up in me as I sat with three of my peers discussing these texts. As much as I've intellectually gotten past the trauma, my body keeps score. And I realized this week that the trauma is still there. But I try to name it and claim it. And I use that to try to empathize with others. I empathize with those affected by divorce. I empathize with all my gay, lesbian, and gender nonconforming friends and family who are or hope to be married one day. I pray that I help bear the pain of my beloved friends and family from the judgment of the world. 
Now let me make two points before we dive into the scripture. First, I know it's hard to hear good news when you are triggered. I know this. And I pray this little extra time I'm kind of leaving here for you will allow those triggering, triggering thoughts and those bodily sensations to dissipate, even if just a bit. Second, and this is for those of you who do not have a personal stake in LGBTQ issues or haven't been affected by divorce, I ask that you bear witness to the suffering of your siblings here. And in doing so, may your heart be torn open and grow. Again, if this is personal for you, I am so sorry. If you need to step away at any time, I understand. I nearly stepped away from these texts myself. But I do hope that you find a way to stay and listen. Or at least come back to it later. All of our services are found on YouTube. And may God help us all to feel beloved, especially today. So let's begin in Mark. People were testing Jesus, and they asked him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? And as he often does, Jesus answered their question with a question of his own. What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. Now I assure you, there is much more in the law about marriage and divorce than just this. But Jesus points out that because of your hardness of heart, Moses wrote this commandment for you. And with this exchange, it is revealed that this isn't really a teaching about divorce. Rather, it is a teaching about how these men, or those with agency and power, pushed a lawmaker to make it easier for them to get what they wanted. Because that's what they did. There is an imbalance of power here, a real vulnerability for the woman in this scenario. With this law, divorce could be used as a weapon to threaten one's wife from speaking openly with her husband. Be careful. I can, I can divorce you. Remember that when we talk about Genesis later on today. Jesus later take, talks to his disciples about this, and the point of his teaching is that there is the law, right? Capital, all capital letters, the law, that which God handed down to Moses. We call it the Ten Commandments. And then there is the law that humans have written the law is what Jesus referenced when he said the whole of the law is this, to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your soul, and the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. That's the whole law right there. That's it. And that should be the lens at which we look at every other law through. So Jesus' point is that this isn't really about divorce. We all know there are times when divorce becomes necessary, especially when someone's safety is at stake. But this is not due to God's law. It is because of our need to bend and twist and write new laws, laws that create inequity and laws that do not protect the vulnerable. This text is meant to show us our own hypocrisy, our own brokenness, and our need for salvation. You see, the hypocrites got their wish for divorce because they wanted to maintain a society that empowered men at the cost of vulnerable women and of children. This point is brought home at the end of the message. Jesus told the disciples who were scolding those bringing children to Jesus, Let the children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. The lesson here is that we all must humble ourselves before God in all things, just like a child. We must seek Jesus in complete humility and vulnerability like a child. We must look to God for all of our safety, all of our security, and all of our joy like a child. This is also how we must come to Scripture, with humility and with grace. Now, about that other elephant in the room. Jesus referenced 
our Genesis text. You know the one. The one that has been used time and again to mercilessly bludgeon same-sex and gender nonconforming marriage. I simply cannot give you all the reasons why this is simply not true in a sermon, but I would like to highlight a few things, some Hebrew translations that I hope you find helpful. First, and I cannot stress this enough, if you continue to struggle with this, or if you cannot find grace and mercy and love for anyone and everyone who seeks the beauty and joy that comes within a marriage relationship, then please come talk to me about it. I do have further things for you to ponder. I have scholarship. I have prayer practices. There's a lot of things we can do to help. The first thing we must understand here is that Hebrew is a gendered language. Anyone here take Spanish or French? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about by a gendered language, don't you? But if you've only ever known English, then this would be a foreign concept to an English speaker because English is a non-gendered language. Ancient Hebrew contains two grammatical genders. Every noun, every object, every adverb, verb, participle, and pronoun, and even some particles are either masculine or feminine. And that's it. In Hebrew, there really isn't a way to address gender nonconforming individuals. This is important because the Old Testament is written in the binary gender of the Hebrew language. Therefore, translators tend to lean into the masculinity or femininity, femininity of the Hebrew from which each word is translated. Our Genesis text is a lot more complicated than most people think. In English we read, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. That word man comes from a masculine term that simply means human. It is from Adama, or from the earth. Thus we get the name Adam. Maybe you've heard humans called mud people before or dirt people. That's where that comes from. Nowhere does the Hebrew apply gender to the actual human. Just the word itself is gendered as masculine. God will make the human a helper. Now the word for helper is also a masculine noun. That means just what it says, one who helps. So is the helper also a man? Or is human and helper connected in a way outside and beyond gender? That's what I think. And I find this fascinating. The word for partner here is also a masculine noun. But here's what it means. Here's what partner means in the Hebrew. One who declares, tells, or makes known. That's what a partner does. One who declares, tells, or makes known. So God wants to give the first human another that declares, tells, or makes known something. Now what would God want to be made known in a relationship between two humans? I wonder. Furthermore, what help would that information be to this couple? Listen, I could go on for hours and hours and hours. I am kind of a nerd with this stuff. And I hope that you're beginning to see that our translations barely begin to scratch the surface of what any piece of Scripture may be trying to reveal to us. Now here's a couple more before we move on. The word for rib, you know, the one that was ripped out of Adam, the human being, earth person, that is a feminine noun. Perhaps this is why woman is feminine. Our translation uses a capital W for woman because the first use of the word is a title. It's a title. It's a title for the one who declares and makes known. With this, let me posit a nuanced description of this second creation story. Remember, there's two of them, and they're quite different. The first person was formed of the earth. God recognized that the one made in God's image needed to be in relationship with others like them. For this would be the way for humanity to be in relationship with God. So, from the first person, God created another, a helper, a partner, one who declares, tells, or makes known God. How? By the relationship itself. We find God within the love we share with our partners. 
Let me say that again. We find God within the love we share with our partners. Take gender out of the equation, and this is what we are left with. God is found in loving, committed relationships. Full stop. Full stop. It is sin that has caused humanity to use gender as a weapon. It is sin that has limited gender to a binary and caused inequity amongst genders. Those who would cling to the inequitable power seek to keep that power in balance intact. Thus, marriage for them must be between the binary man and the binary woman, where the man holds the bulk of the power. Still today, still today, but this ruins the sanctity of the partnership that God created humanity for. We were created for much more than that. We are not able to declare the love of God to one another when we cannot be in committed, loving, equitable partnership with the person we know in our bones that we were born to love. Listen, I don't have all the answers. But I know what love is, and I know that love is for everyone, everywhere. To close, I realize that one sermon is not going to undo centuries of trauma and violence perpetuated in God's name. Still in Christ, we are empowered to name and claim all truth. We are also blessed to be swept up in the grace of God through Christ Jesus, which is especially important for us to declare to one another. I could say we were created to declare this to one another, for in that we will find equitable love. So let us be each other's helpers. Let us be partners as God intended. Also, be a beloved child of God. Come to God like a child in all things with complete humility and complete trust and be showered in the grace of Jesus who lived, died, and was resurrected so that everyone, every one of you can simply love and be loved. Amen. Our service continues in song. Grab those egg shakers. Stand up. Let's get into it.
Well, it's time for a couple of baptisms. I'd like to invite all the kids to come sit up front here so you can bear witness to this baptism, these baptisms of your friends. Up, up here, up here, young ones. Right up here, like a half moon facing the font. There you go. Good job. Come watch. Come be a part of this. Good job. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents Eleanor and Greta to receive the gifts of holy baptism? We do. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in grace and the love of God, do you desire to have Eleanor and Greta baptized into Christ? If so, say, we do. As you bring Eleanor and Greta to receive the gift of baptism, you are all entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer, so they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. If so, say, I do. Do you parents, sponsors, and congregation promise to help Eleanor and Greta grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say, we do. We do. I ask all to profess their faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, we do. Let's try that again. Do you renounce them? If so, say, we do. We do. All right, rise as you are able. I'm going to send that devil running right now. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Blessed are you O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. Your water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. 
Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe and baptize with Christ. And claim your children no longer as slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Julie? I noticed the slide says Grandma Donna, but this is Grandma Julie playing the music. Eleanor, are you ready? Remember how we practiced? Did you want to turn around like you did when we practiced? Okay. Lean your head over. Eleanor May Cleavy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. You can give that to your sponsors. Now let's get your stool for you. Greta Ann Cleavy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. Good job. We give thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your children new birth. 
cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Where'd you run off to, Eleanor? Sustain, Eleanor, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. Eleanor, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Your turn. Try to get out of the way for the camera here. Sustain Greta with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Greta, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You can grab a seat, and Katie's going to play us a song.
Mike, Sarah, Eleanor, Greta, please come up one more time. It's time to make the big presentation. We're waiting for your candles. You did it. You did awesome. Sponsors. I forgot to ask the sponsors up to come hold the candles. <laughs> I gave them instructions beforehand that they would hold the candles, so they're probably wondering what's going on. <laughs> Here we come. Is your baptismal candles, Eleanor and Greta? Let your light shine before others that they may see, see good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm going to say it again because there's two of you. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works, glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of life, look with kindness upon Mike and Sarah. Let them ever rejoice in the gift of life you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness, goodness and grace for Eleanor and Greta. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternity, eternally with Eleanor and Greta the salvation you have given them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Welcome. Now look at the congregation. They're going to say something to you. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Woohoo! <laughs> Good job, everybody. All right, you can blow out the candles. Kids, thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. Way to go. And afterwards, I'll give you all of your presents. How's that sound? Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. God of our ancestors, we give thanks for the church in all times. May we listen for the prophets of this age who bear messages that stir the church toward renewal and justice. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator of every creature on earth, direct our lives toward the renewal and sustaining of cattle, birds of the air, animals of the field, and those who share our homes. Reveal the ways we can work alongside creation for the health and well-being of all. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, we give thanks that you are mindful and benevolent to even us mere mortals. Accompany us when hardness of heart gets in the way of justice between people and nations, endow leaders with minds of justice and hearts for compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Restoring, Lord, grant healing and wholeness to those who are sick and suffering. Today, we especially pray for those we now name in our hearts. Work through medical professionals to diagnose, ease pain, and give life to all who seek their wisdom and experience. God of grace, hear our prayer. Unifying God, humans were created for relationship with the earth, its creatures, and one another. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, mutual support, and unity among us. May your love inspire us to build supportive communities of faith where all are cherished. God of grace, hear our prayer. 
God of the resurrection. You prepare a place in the kingdom through Christ's death and resurrection. We give thanks for the saints who have taken their place at your heavenly banquet. Today we especially give thanks for Margie Christofferson. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another at this time. As we gather up our gifts for the life and ministry of this church, I invite those of you worshiping at home, if you are able, you may send an offering to the address or you can scan the QR code. Give that a try. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, a source of every gift of your creation. 
by these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we prepare to hear and remember the words of our Lord Jesus who gave us this Holy Supper, hear us, O Lord. In response to the call of God, the command of Jesus Christ, and the bond of our common faith, we come to the table. We remember. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. And in the goldfish crackers, we have a reminder of God's love and forgiveness for the youngest of our assembly. They are a gift that reminds of the same grace, the same story alive in Jesus' gift to us. Gathered together as one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Today, you will commune via wafer. The ushers will guide you forward where you will receive a wafer. We do have a gluten-free wafer as well. Simply let us know. And then you may select either a glass of the red wine or the white grape juice. And then the empty cups go into the baskets on either side of the aisle. Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come. All are welcome, with no exceptions. Following our Lord's command and responding to our need for forgiveness, we come.
Please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the blessing, I hope you shake those egg shakers one last time. And Josh, can we have the basket at the back to collect them as people exit? Thank you, sir. Receive this blessing. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Now let's sing God is good. God is good. Let's sing. Peace and follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.